Yo, I think this is the first time in a long time, honestly, maybe ever, that I am seeing a lot. Actually, I don't want to say a lot because I don't even think a lot of people have even watched this movie. Netflix definitely lies about their numbers. But for the discourse that I am seeing about it, it is definitely majority negative. And I'm not gonna lie, I feel like we all watch different movies and or I am realizing how important some of our collective audience genuinely calls about the quote unquote message that seems to be littered in every single piece of media, allegedly. And don't get me wrong, I'm sure for the lot of you, that's not even shocking or breaking news. For the fraction of the amount of people that have actually seen this movie Atlas, one of the most on-brand, straight-to-streaming Netflix movies if I've ever seen one. I mean, you guys know me. Let's go through the list, shall we? We have a movie starring a C-list actor with A-list looks. Check. An unnecessary triple-digit budget for a straight-to-streaming movie. Check. A cheeky veteran to give some structure behind the scenes of what is more than likely a dumpster fire. Check. A hot up-and-coming actor with just enough brand recognition where casuals could go, Hey, isn't he in those Marvel movies? Check. Just a generic enough plot of sci-fi and AI because that's just the trendy thing going on right now. Check. Man, this is rough. And I don't even watch movies like this. The straight to streaming types. I feel like for every one Uncut Gems, The King, or Ocha, man, that movie was so good. There's five little nasty parasites clinging on to those success stories for dear life like Damsel, Heart of Stone, Old Guard, The Gray Man, Red Notice, Bright, those Kissing Booth movies, Glass Onion. Yes, that movie was shit on a screen and I stand on business with it. But the point is even with all of those potential missteps that this movie could have had coming from a studio that has had a track record of serving up overpriced off-brand food to its audience, Atlas was a movie that at least looked me in the eye and had the respect to give me some effort. Think pre cap skinny Steve Rogers running that 10 miles or doing those 100 push-ups or whatever. He looks like an absolute bloke, but my god, you gotta respect it. And while I'm definitely not saying that this movie Atlas is going to become the Netflix version of Captain America, don't misconstrue my analogy. For all of the stereotypes surrounding this movie, such as Jennifer Lopez is a plank actress, which I have realized that this is my first movie ever actually watching her work her craft. Those Ice Age movies don't count. Or just the setting of the Terminator franchise, but just a more dystopian AI wallpaper over top could have really made this movie just another bargain bin type of movie. But it strangely wasn't. And it was a movie that even in the comfort of my own home, I didn't check my phone a single time. Well, maybe one time. But then again, since I know only the bare minimum of amount of people with functioning brain cells actually took their hard-earned time to watch what could have been potential shit on a screen, let's go ahead and talk. Okay, so as mentioned before, Atlas is easily one of the most on-brand, straight-to-streaming Netflix movies you're gonna get. Exhibit A, Atlas follows our main character, Atlas. That's the name of the movie. That yes, it is, producer guy. Wait, don't sue me because of that. The story follows Atlas 28 years later after the AI of her world broke free of their programming due to their messiah named Harlan, the original AI robot played by Simba Liu of Marvel fame, and just so happened to also be an AI brother of some sort to our main character. After connecting to Atlas's brain and, well, realizing what every generic ass movie antagonist realizes when they glaze over the history of the human race, it must be destroyed and built anew. And with that, Harlan eradicates millions of people until the world itself establishes the ICN, or the International Coalition of Nations, in order to fight back. With the coalition now turning the tide in the war, Harlan flees to deep space with plans to return back to Earth to exact his revenge. Now I'm not gonna lie, I'm not even quite sure how or why I was even interested in or turned on this movie. I feel like I got no promotion for it whatsoever, which doesn't really make sense seeing how I think it was actually one of their most quality products that they put out, which kind of shows the shit quality that they have been putting out. Especially compared to the marketing campaign they put behind Damsel, and that movie was Cheeks. I'm never on Netflix, and as mentioned before, it's not like Jennifer Lopez is really a draw as to why you should watch her movies. I mean, look at those Ben Affleck memes. Mans looks more devastated with each and every passing meme than when he had to deliver that infamous Martha line. 
I've heard the stereotypes of J-Lo, not to be confused with J-Law, who is probably equally as a plank. And while I've never personally witnessed it, I've seen movie starring Gail Godot, so I understand how detrimental it can be to the entire production if your movie star is an absolute plank. But weirdly enough, that was not the case here. I'm here to say that J-Lo, in my opinion, actually gave us a performance here. And I'm not going to say that it was good or bad or incredible or anything, but it was a performance that I was invested in throughout the entirety of the movie. And her character arc with Atlas, while very predictable, was well executed and I felt like her banter with her AI counterpart Smith was one of, if not the most enjoyable aspect of the movie overall. The audience makes it look and sound so simple, but acting in what was more than likely a green screen mocap room talking to yourself because your co-star is a voice only off screen actor sounds extremely difficult, let alone actually developing rapport, chemistry, and charisma between the two characters. And by the end of the movie, in a way, you genuinely care about the partnership that Atlas has created with Smith and the character bonding, character arc, and character growth that the two had gone through throughout their journey. So I'm not going to throw shade on Jennifer Lopez for movies that I haven't seen, but I can definitely give her her respect for a performance she gave for the movie that I have seen. With that being said, where was my boy Simu Liu? How are you going to cast my boy and only have him in the movie for around 40 minutes? What's interesting is that I've noticed that we as an audience are going through an epidemic when it goes to the pacing of our movies that we have been getting in the past year or so. I've noticed it with my last reviewed movie with Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, Hollywood is having a really, really hard time introducing, fleshing out, and giving our villains valuable and important screen time. And it is no different here. Simu Liu plays our AI villain Harlan, and it's unfortunate because his motivations and even backstory are some of the most generic and by-the-books reasons that you could give. Third grade level character writing here. But what makes it even more unfortunate is that when Simu Liu was on your screen, he actually played the part of a no-nonsense and non-remorseful villain, which is something that I wasn't quite sure that Simu Liu even had in his bag. But his jaded portrayal of Harlan was pretty solid, carefully balancing off Jennifer Lopez's Atlas as her enemy and her past caretaker and closest friend. Again, when flowers are due, flowers are due. At the end of the day, for a movie that I felt like got absolutely no marketing, and a movie that was surrounded by all of the stereotypes in our Hollywood landscape working against it, and of course a track record that supports the majority of those claims, I wholeheartedly expected when the end credits to roll that I would just lump in Atlas as just another half-assed, generic, straight-to-the-bargain-bin Netflix movie. But to my shock, I was genuinely surprised by the performances of our actors, genuinely surprised by how well-crafted that third-act action sequence was, and genuinely found it a surprisingly digestible watch that didn't have me checking my phone for literally anything better to do. So in a ranking system, or I guess you could say a grading system that is relatively new that eventually won't be new, we started this in 2024 and honestly I would say it's going pretty solid so far. I would go say watch some of those reviews even though you're just gonna see where I rank them here, but I mean, you can still go do your boy a solid. With that being said, don't get me wrong, we're still looking at a Toontown ass movie here. But I mean, when I look at all of these movies underneath it, even though I was kind of glazing it for the better part of half of this video, it still honestly makes me feel even more confident in my decision. Rebel Moon and Madam Web were truly a different tier of shit on a screen. Of course, as always, I want to thank you guys for watching the video. And if you enjoyed, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. I should go say follow me on Twitter. I started a whole new account for this channel, so I'm going to start promoting that more. Again, I want to thank you guys for watching the video. Make sure to like and subscribe. If you did enjoy, why not click on more while you're at it? Otherwise, that's all the words I got for you today. Bye.